Hey everybody, David Warner here with another M365 video SharePoint short. Today we're going to take a look at getting started from scratch with Visual Studio Code for column formatting. We're going to take a look at when you might want to use VS Code and what the easiest way to get started with it is. It's super powerful, it doesn't have to be intimidating, and it's really easy to do. Let's dive right in and take a look. If you haven't already done so, it might be best to review the previous column formatting getting started videos that I've created. They'll bring you up to speed and make you ready for what we're going to discuss next. To refresh ourselves of how we can edit our column formatting JSON, let's take a quick look at one of the previous samples that we've created, the social pics. In this list, we know that we've made a column formatting enhancement that allows us to take our Twitter information or Instagram information, uh, the social network we belong to, and it'll display the social picture pulled directly from the social network, whether it's Instagram or Twitter. And editing that column formatting enhancement is very simple. We go ahead and select the column heading, column settings, and select format this column. And now we see all of our column formatting JSON here in the panel flyout for formatting the column. No doubt making changes here in the column directly on the list. It's very simple, especially if we only need to make simple changes. If we've already pasted in our column formatting or created it elsewhere, got it from a sample somewhere, then certainly making small little changes, for example, changing our picture size from 48 pixels to 50 pixels and applying and previewing and seeing that, it's very simple, very fast. But if we actually want to start from scratch, if we have no column formatting sample that we're already starting with or modifying, for example, in our uh, sample list here, if we were to remove all of the column formatting that we already have in place, we'll just go ahead and delete it, we'll hit preview, and we see we're left with a basic plain list. No enhancements, no column formatting has been applied. If this is where we were gonna start and we were gonna just click into the format column editing uh, text box, well, it might be a little frustrating, confusing, a little intimidating. We might not quite sure be sure where to start exactly what to type in. So when we find ourselves in this scenario where we've got a list, we wanna apply column formatting, but we don't know exactly what we want to do to it, this is a perfect scenario to start with Visual Studio Code. So we're going to open up Visual Studio Code. We're going to see how we can start out with some very basic JSON. We're going to add a schema, and then we're going to see how this schema will actually provide us IntelliSense that helps jumpstart our creation of our column formatting enhancement. So for this demo, I'm going to start out with an empty folder. What this allows me to do is create a JSON file from scratch that I can then open in Visual Studio Code. This is just a quick way to have the file saved as JSON from the very beginning. So I'll go ahead and right click, I'll select new, and I'll select text document. Uh, it's just going to create a text document, but I'm going to select all and then paste in the name of my file. In this case, column formatting.json. It's going to see that we're wanting to change it. That's fine. Hit yes. And then when the Explorer changes the file, as you can see just occurred, it now sees that the type is a JSON source file and that it's named column formatting.json. You can see the icon has changed as well. Now it's being recognized as something that is valid for Visual Studio Code. I just find this easier than opening a new file and then saving it inside of Visual Studio Code. As soon as I open it in VS Code, it knows exactly what kind of file format it is. So at this point, you can either right click on the file itself, or you can right click on the folder to open it in Visual Studio Code. In case we're going to create additional files, I'll just go ahead and open up the folder in Visual Studio Code. So you just right click and select Open with Code. Now what's going to happen is it's going to launch Visual Studio Code. We'll go ahead and expand it to the full window, and it's going to see that we've already entered our folder here. We'll go ahead and close some of our little announcements here. And you can see it uh, also sees the file that I've already created. So I can go ahead and double click on that, and we'll see it's opened it. It is now seeing it as a valid JSON file. But at this point, there's really nothing added to our JSON file. So we need to actually put in code that's valid uh, that allows us to get that IntelliSense. We know that JSON is nothing more than a collection of JavaScript objects and arrays. So the first thing we need to do is create an open object. So we'll go ahead and do that. You can see that it's uh, added the close bracket for us. We'll go ahead and hit enter, and now we've got an empty object to start working with. So what we need to add now is a schema. Now what a schema is inside of a JSON file is just a URL that points to a set of directions. Uh, this schema directions for column formatting is what allows us to have that column formatting IntelliSense provided to us as we start creating our column formatting enhancement. 
the best place to get the schema reference is from Microsoft directly. You can get it in any of the column formatting examples in GitHub. I've actually went out and already pre-got it from the documentation. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paste it in. Now you can see that I've pasted in the schema. It sees it as a valid URL. And so if I go ahead and just go back up one line and put a comma, now when I drop to the next line, it'll actually start providing me if I hit control space bar with some of the uh, column formatting options that I have. So we're gonna start out by creating a very simple example, but it's gonna show how we can utilize the IntelliSense to help us start creating samples from scratch. So the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and select the limb type. That's usually the first thing you'll do. You wanna define whether or not it's gonna be a div or a span, uh, what kind of element uh, type you're wanting to display inside of your column. Now what's also nice is in addition to the IntelliSense help we get from the pop-up, it also gives us descriptions when and where it's applicable. So you can see if I scroll down to a limb type, the description over on the right changes to the type of element to create. We'll go ahead and select that and we see that we get further refinement of the IntelliSense. In this case, we can create an anchor tag, a button, a div, so on and so forth. So we're gonna go ahead and select div. And so now we wanna go ahead and add some attributes to our div, such as a class. So to do that, we'll go ahead and hit comma, we'll hit enter, and you see that the IntelliSense doesn't automatically always come back up for you when you go to a new line. Uh, you can always engage it by hitting the typical control space bar on your keyboard. So we'll do that, now we see we have a collection of other choices. We're gonna go ahead and select attributes, and we see that's automatically created an object because attributes for a div can be more than one. And so it's going to be an object within our JSON to define that. And then again, now that we're in our object, we can go ahead and hit control space bar on our keyboard and it'll tell us the different options that we have, the different attributes that we can add to our div. We'll go ahead and select class. And now we actually are giving a, a command or we're adding and assigning this attribute to our uh, element, which is a div. So to add and define that, when you've said you want it to be a class, that's the property, We'll go ahead and hit a column, and now you see that it's saying a new object needs to be created. Now, if, if you're only adding a singular item, if all we're going to do is add an actual label, you don't need to create the object. We could just hit space, and we can create an open uh, quotes, and we can say column div. And that'll just create a class called column div uh, within our div. Now at this point, all that would be is an empty div. So there's no value in that. So we wanna go ahead and add additional data into our div. We've added a class, that's great, it's an attribute. Now we want our div to actually contain content. So you'll go ahead and you'll go out of the attributes object here, that's defined by that object bracket. We'll go to the end of that, and then we'll hit comma, and we'll go ahead and define another new property for our div. So again, you saw the IntelliSense didn't pop back up automatically, so we'll hit Control Space. And now what we wanna do is we wanna go select text content. This is the property within our column formatting that allows us to define what should be included in that div. So we'll go ahead and hit Enter. And again, we've assigned the property, so now we wanna go ahead and hit colon, and in this case, it's going to actually display, again, the object choice. So we have another choice. We can go ahead and create an object that might get more complex, as we'll see uh, later in the demo. In this case, we're just going to go ahead and create a single item. So we're gonna go ahead and hit quote, double quote, and then there's those keywords that we can use to display certain properties or values. In this case, one of those keywords is current field, and you, you preface it with an ampersand, uh, always starts with a lowercase, so we're gonna say current field. Oops, current field. And now, if we were to display this inside of our uh, list, it would create a div with a class called column div, and it would display whatever that, whatever that column's value is. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, this is a fully functioning, as simple as it is, this is a fully functioning column formatting. It's really not doing anything amazing, it's just simply replacing the field within our list with the exact same thing that's stored in the list. But it shows you how that can be done. So we'll go ahead and select Control A, and we'll go ahead and copy that. Now we'll go ahead and switch over into our list where we want to apply that column formatting. Uh, we see we've already got the column formatting panel open up for us. Uh, it is based on the social pick, and we see that all we're, all we're including here is our social IDs, right? These are the uh, IDs that we want to show up. In this case, Twitter is my ID, Twitter, Chris Kent's, and Instagram surface. And so if I paste and click into this field over here for our column formatting, 
and paste in the value that we just created, we can preview that. Go ahead and select preview. And you see nothing really changed that much simply because all we did was replace it with a div. But if we go use our developer toolbar, bring that up down here, and we examine the HTML makeup of our item, we can see that when we look at right down here, right there, we can see that it created a div, and you can see that it created one with the class name column div. Thanks for watching. You can always see more at my blog, warner.digital, or a direct link to the videos at m365.video. To keep updated on all things column formatting, take a look at the two links on your screen. The first is the official Microsoft documentation. The second is a GitHub repository with tons of community samples that you can use by almost just copying and pasting. Thanks again.